to another video where today we will be reacting to Jaden Animations I attempted my first Pokemon Nuzlocke let's watch it within the Pokemon community there's a set of self-imposed rules you can add to the games to make them more challenging called a Pokemon Nuzlocke you can only oh uh, sometimes I will go quiet well most of the time but so you can hear what's happening catch the first pokemon you run into per route if a pokemon faints it dies and you can't use it anymore and you have to nickname your pokemon oh jigglypuff called mayo on to get more attached to them that means if you aren't careful you can technically lose a pokemon how would a wisma kill a septile Hmm. game under those conditions i've wanted to do a nuzlocke for the longest time i've started a couple in the past but never actually got to finish any because busy but today's the day that all changes i decided to make a video on my first full attempt at a pokemon oh sorry pause the video on ruby nuzlocke let's see how it went after breaking free from the back of the moving truck my mom stuffed me in and introducing myself to the neighbor Brendan, the kid that I always thought was a monkey said that he heard screaming up ahead. Professor Birch is getting mauled by a level 2 Poochiana, so I let his Torchic out and she scratches the crap out of it. He gifts me Torchic for rescuing him and I name her Teriyaki, my first Pokemon. Walking up the route more, I run into Brendan who challenges me to a battle where Teriyaki proceeds to also scratch the crap out of his Mudkip. Good job Teriyaki, you're two for two, doing great. Professor Birch gives me five Pokeballs. I like how Brendan is just on the floor looking at his mud kit dying. <laughs> what? Uh, that sounded bad. On with the video. And the Nuzlocke has officially started. I walked back up to catch my first Pokemon and ran into a Zigzagoon. Alright, not the best, but I can work with this. You know, I think we're gonna have a really awesome adventure. Dude! Teriyaki, you killed the Zigzagoon. To be fair, that's what Mudkip did to my Zigzagoon in Omega Ruby. So Teriyaki one-shotted Zigzagoon with a critical hit scratch, <laughs> but whatever. Contain your murder a little bit, all right, guy? Route 102 is right around the corner, and that's where I was able to catch Corn the Sea Dot. Look at us, couple of friends ready to take on the Hoenn region together. After watching the weird kid Wally struggle to catch his first Pokemon, I continued on to Route 104 and found a little Talo in the grass. Aggressive and screams and hungry. Oh yeah. I know your name. Sorry. In Petalburg like Forest, a Team Magma up. Grunt jumps some random professor, so Ari and Teriyaki peck Ari his eyes and out. If you don't know why she called her Taylo uh, Ari, that's because she has a bird called Ari. Oh, hello, Shroomish. I'm gonna name you Onion. I make it to Rustboro, and while getting ready to take on Roxanne's gym, Teriyaki kills another Zigzagoon. I was a. Why? Do you keep on killing so many zigzagoons? My mudkip did not kill that many zigzagoons. Okay. Maybe about ten. About to catch? What's your problem with zigzagoons, dude? But it turned out alright because she also ended up evolving. Onion was able to destroy Roxanne with ease and we got our first gym badge. Exiting the gym, we catch a glance that Team Magma is up to no good again something about the scorching earth or something and this old man exclaims that they stole his pico on oh, this pico bit i literally could not figure out what to do it was annoying it took me like three hours here's your dog also you're coming with me the mayor thanks me by turning me into his errand boy and i arrive in duford to give a letter to stephen all right what do we got I thought that was going to be a Zubat, but Mile was quite good. Ugh. Okay, chomps. After finding Steven, it was time to take on Brawly, the next gym leader. Ari's a stone cold killer and easily earned MVP in that fight. Things were going well. Two badges in, and the team is looking good. On my way to the next city, I caught a tentacle on the beach. <sighs> Squidward. And after beating Team Magma and Brendan again in Slateport, it was time again to get ready for the gym battle with Watson. But as I was fighting some trainers, Chomps the Mawile got electrocuted a bit too hard and was killed. Wow, Mawile died. 
got a magnet on too. Wasn't expecting that to happen. Jaden, let's battle. I want to show you how strong I am. <laughs> it's a shroom with bullets eating the way. Okay. Ari, this is an electric gym. You're not allowed to fight in here, so you can just wait outside. While battling, the gym trainers, Onion evolved into Breloom, and together with Teriyaki, they were able to get another victory. Now we were riding high. Three gym badges in, and no main casualties. With our massive confidence, we decided to take on the Wind Straight family's challenge of beating all their family members. I had Squidward out front to get him some experience, but we ran into some troubles with Grandma. Oh god, it's gonna do a high jump kick. We can take him out, but I need a clean switch first. So I had to sacrifice Hush Child the Whismur, but honestly, that was the safest move Hush to ensure no one else died. Goodbye, Hush Child. You might be missed. While we were heading to Fall Arbor, fighting some trainers, Ari evolved. Oh, look at my big bird. Oh, look at you. Yeah. We were almost to town, but we had to get through the sooty grass on 113. Ugh. First encounter I got on this route. I didn't even know Skarmory was on this route until now. Bender. Oh, jeez. All right, Barf, get in there with the rest of them. I walked into Meteor Falls to see Team Aqua and Team Magma arguing about water and rocks. Can I go? Go get them. Get they the kept Zuba. complaining and I had to go up the volcano they were blocking Did to fight it? Maxi, the Team Magma leader. That was a hard fight. Onion and Teriyaki were able to take out his Mightyana and Camerupt, but his Golbat hit hard. I ended up having to switch in Ari and double team up to win the battle. Not the most honorable of strategies, but it worked and we're moving on. On the way down the volcano, I ran into a matchup. Oh, hello there, Chad. What? You're a female? Did I stutter? We arrived in Lava Ridge Town and started getting through Flannery's gym. During that time, Squidward was almost killed by a fury swiping Kecleon. Fury swipes. Oh, oh my gosh, that does a lot of damage. It's strong! <laughs> but when it came time to battle, he pulled his weight and more. Honestly, with the team, there wasn't much I could have done to Flannery's fire Pokemon, but Squidward came in clutch by learning Bubble Beam, and it was all over for her. Badge four, under our belt. Brendan met up with us outside the gym to give us goggles so we could walk in the sandstorms. I found a claw fossil and Anorith was born. I didn't know what to name it, so my friend named him Gary. Now it was time for the fifth gym. After some training, Chad evolved into Machoke and the team was leveled up. I started the battle with Ari and after realizing I was in trouble, yeah, that doesn't do a lot of damage. Uh... I managed to squeak by with more double teams. Ari was barely able to take out the first slacking, so when the second, stronger one came out, I knew I had to use a different strategy. I brought out Onion to leech seed it and try and get more chip damage in, which worked, but he was also killed by slacking no, facade, which I thought he could take. Chad was able to finish off the rest of the fight, but that was the first death that actually hurt. I'm not crying. Someone's just chopping onions in here. Ooh, but with every onions. down, there's an up. And Corn stepped up and was ready to fill Onion's spot. While passing Yay, through Mauville again, Watson asked us to help him turn off the city's generator. And while down there, I found a Magnemite. You want to come with? <laughs> okay. We kept on our way, catching Sperky the Electric, and while fighting some trainers, Corn survived two very close calls. He took a Sword Dance boosted Fury Cutter by Ninjask, and a misclick from me, which resulted in him tanking a wing attack from a Talo. No, no, no! No, 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 no! Corn, no! Oh. Dude, Corn, I'm so sorry. You're such a trooper. Good news is Squidward evolved while training, so that's neat. Well, we arrived in Fortree City, and this was a gym I was really nervous about. Not only did we not have a good team to take on a flying type gym, but Winona's Altaria is notorious for sweeping teams if she sets up too many dragon dances. I went to the grass to train up the team. 
and the worst happened. Corn was killed by pin missile from a zigzagoon. Wait, wait, no, 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 stop, stop! Corn! Corn, no! No, corn. corn! You monster, how could you do this? Is this why you kept trying to kill all the zigzagoons? I want to think that Corn sacrificed himself because he knew we were at too much of a disadvantage going into Winona's gym, and by opening up a space, we could get the type advantage we needed to stand a chance. With a heavy heart, I brought Zip Zaps off the Magnemite to the team and realized how much more grinding I was gonna have to do. I had to fight so many Merrells to get Zip Zap Zop on par with the rest um, of the team. Huh? You wanna know how many? The move Thunderbolt can be used 15 times before it runs out. And I had to go back to the Pokemon Center almost six separate times to refill it. Meaning Zip Zap Zop killed more than 80 Merrill that were living in that lake. Winona led with Swellow, which Zip Zap Zop was able to take out. But she immediately brought out Altaria, which made me very scared because I know she's got Earthquake on that thing. I didn't have a clean switch and I knew no one on the team could take two hits from this cloud bird. So I ultimately decided that I'd have to have Zip Zap Zop paralyze it in exchange for his death. Goodbye, Yay, Zip Zap Zop. You weren't here for long but your efforts will not be in vain. Oh my <laughs> god! Somehow Zip Zap Zop lived the earthquake on 2 HP like a mad lad. Corn must have been looking down on us for that one because there was definitely a 90% chance Zip Zap Zop was supposed to die there. With that string of luck, Corn I was able to switch him. Ari in Yay. for Zip Zap Zop to predict another earthquake and started chipping away at the Altaria, which was not gonna be easy. She was already starting to stack up those dragon dances, <laughs> which make her moves even My more hearts. powerful, and I was legitimately sweating. But with what little luck we had left, Winona got greedy and tried to get in that last dragon dance, and that's when Ari was able to swoop in and snipe that kill. Cool. If that Altaria would have decided to attack at any point, she would have one-shotted anyone and everyone on my team. Thank you, Corn. You shined your photosynthesis onto us. From there, I was able to heal up Zip Zap Zop and sweep the rest of her team. The sixth gym badge, was ours. Yep. Outside the safari zone, I found a Duskull I was able to catch. I tried to have Gary on the team since resurrecting him from the dirt, but he honestly has like no moves that do damage, so I decided to replace him with Sin. We arrived in Lily Cove and I tried fishing on the I beach for a Pokemon, but like Chad God, punched sin. the Whalemer I reeled up too hard and killed it. We stormed Team Magma's base, and while trying to get the Master Ball they've got on the ground, an Electrode exploded and almost killed Chad, which was uncalled for. Yay. After beating their admin, they escaped into a submarine, and I went on to fight the next gym. Tate and Liza were the first double battle gym leaders, and I didn't realize until too late that I was just a tad underleveled for them. Um, oh no. They don't have any more than two Pokemon, so I think we should be okay. 42? Uh oh. Sin and Zip Zap Zop uh -oh. made a good duo being able to confuse and paralyze them, but Soul Rock managed to get off a sunny day powered flamethrower in Zip Zap Zop's face, which totally Ooh. killed him. That really sucked. He put in so much work for the team and really carried us this far. The rest of this fight's for you, Zip Zap Zop. Squidward came out and cool. together with Sin, we're able to finish off the duo, getting us our seventh gym badge. <sighs> All right, Sparky, you're up. Ugh. I think I single-handedly wiped out the entire water Pokemon population between Zip Zap Zop and Sparky. I went to Shoal Cave and caught Blubby the Spiel and went out to take on Maxi one last time. For some reason, I didn't learn my lesson when being underleveled for Tate and Liza because I was even more underleveled for Maxi. My Deanna. It doesn't go down? This fight was rough. Chad was able to take out his mighty Anna, but I resorted to Squidward when his Crobat came out, and luck wasn't on my side here because Squidward was killed by a high roll wing attack. Ugh. The way Pokemon works is there's a small range of damage an attack can do. It's not actually the same all the time, and it's kind of based on chance. So even though it looked like Squidward could have lived two wing attacks, Maxi was able to get a low roll on the first one and a high roll on the second. 
which was the death of Squidward. But it wasn't time to give up. We had to persevere for Squidward. Ari came in and took out the crowbat and lived on one HP when hit by Camerap's rock slide. It was a tough Ooh. battle, but we squeaked That is by. lucky. Barely. After that fight, I needed to take a step back and seriously grind up the team again. If we were just a bit more underleveled, we would have been murdered. <laughs> Blubby joined the team and we oh, got to work, got eventually now. arriving in Sutopolis. Steven and the Sutopolis gym leader Wallace were there saying Groudon was in the cave because someone used the wrong orb and pissed him off. So I went in there, walked up to Groudon, and master balled him immediately. There's no way I'm fighting Groudon. Now get in the box! While fighting Wallace, Sperky was able to take out his love disc in Celio. Sin beat his Whiskash, and Chad finished off the Milotic. The team was perfect. And after obtaining our final gym badge, I knew we were ready for the Elite Four. We got through Victory Road. Wally tried to fight us for the last time, but he just needs to stop. We exited the cave, and there it was. The final challenge. Here we go. Sydney was up first, and honestly, he wasn't a challenge at all. Chad and Teriyaki were able to take care of his team with ease. Phoebe wasn't difficult either, with Sin and Blubby being MVPs. Glacio was a bit tougher. Ugh, Teriyaki was able to take out her Glalies, and Sperky could handle her Celios, but her Walrein was the big problem. Walreins are thick, can tank a lot of hits, and can do a lot of damage. I would know because I have one. I brought out Chad and she was able to get in a good amount of damage, but she was ultimately killed by Blizzard. Sin came oh out to God. try and confuse it, but it broke through the confusion and landed a Sheer Cold. <sighs> sheer Cold is a one-hit KO move. It has a 30% chance of hitting the target and will remember, fail if the target Pokemon's love. In Brilliant Diamond, I was. I had a Pokemon that had Sheer Cold and I hit three Sheer Colds in a row on Cynthia's Pokemon, including Garchomp and Lucario and what was the other one? Um, Spiritomb. It was crazy. Level is higher than the users, but even under all those conditions, it hit, and Sin was killed. Two great team members down and out. Chad was with us for so long and pulled so much weight, and Sin got us through some really tough battles. Even with those losses, we were able to finish Glacia off and move on to the final Elite Four member, Drake. Drake's got a tough team, but we've got a blubby, and she wanted revenge for her fallen comrades. She ice beamed every single one of Drake's Pokemon. Just a straight up massacre. And with that, it was on to the last battle. Steven Stone. I was legitimately nervous. I led with Sperky to take out his Skarmory as quick as possible, and Blubby was able to take out his Quaidol and Agron. <laughs> but then came his Metagross. This might be the end. Metagross is Steven's strongest Pokemon, so I needed to hinder it as much as I could before it started doing serious damage. I knew his Metagross had Earthquake, which would definitely take out most of my team, so I had to have Sperky Kamikaze to get a Paralysis off. Blubby came out again, and after a lot of hard work, finally beat the Metagross by spamming Surf. Teriyaki was able to finish his Cradilly, and his final Pokemon was Armaldo, Gary's final revenge for getting booted from the team. I brought out Blobby because Teriyaki was pretty weakened, and after realizing she gets two-shotted by him, I knew she was gonna have to die. So with a heavy heart, Blobby pulled off her last surf, getting Armaldo in the red, and was killed. Teriyaki, the Pokemon who's been with us from the start, who'd seen her friends die in front of her. The OG refused to let any more murder happen. Onion, Corn, Zip Zap Zop, Squidward, Chad, <laughs> Sin, Sperky, Blubby. Their zeros and ones won't go down in vain. Uh, not much, One good not kick to the head, and we did it. We completed the Pokemon Ruby Nuzlocke. Teriyaki and Ari were the only survivors, but the whole team put in a lot of work to get us to number one. A cheers to the true mad lads. The Oxus in the back. Well, that, well, um, that was, that was really good. Yeah. 
this was my like my first reaction video i'm sure um anyways guys i hope you have enjoyed this video um yeah jane animations really good content creator go see the original video i attempted my first pokemon nuzlocke she has posted two more nuzlocke videos and i may soon be watching them like and subscribe please and i'll see you in the next video goodbye